Hi everyone. Well, now the fact that my British Championship series is over, I'm sure you are, don't know what to do with your lives now. But not to worry, because there is more British Championship stuff coming now. And I have had a request of my friend Lee, also known as Cruzy Meister, Drip Drop and Loud Londoner, to do a series on his um, major open hack-ups. Um, and he was actually the bottom seed on feed day and joint bottom on ECF with his feed day at a pal tree 1449 which um, is very underrated because his ECF is 123 which converts to over 1600 and of course um, he can play stronger than that on his day as you will hopefully see over the course of the next um, 10 videos and interestingly enough we start off where we Left, left off because he was his first game was against Mr. Armstrong, who, as you know, um, I played very badly against. Um, and interestingly enough, there was a very nice chippy called Armstrong's. It's my favourite chippy actually. I got a good nice little chicken burger, and chips, nice and filling as well. So I do have fond memories of the name Armstrong, thankfully. Um, of course, um, Lee actually went to the British about three days before everyone else. And he played and competed in a, in several other tournaments over the course of this fortnight. He played in the first rapid play. I think he scored one and a half out of six, but he did draw with a one nine form, which I'm sure he's very glad I mentioned. And he also played in the under one forty championship in the mornings the first week. And he actually got lucky to be seeded just in the top half. So he played someone called Chaz or as we call him Chaz and Dave. It was quite low rated ECF and managed to beat him. So, um, can he take this form into the Major Open? Can he do better than I did against Mr. Armstrong? I mean, that's not very hard to be honest, because I played like a complete plank against him. But, anyway, he was black, and uh, 1e4 got played. C5, knight f3, and now we get a Sicilian knight off, which was a favourite of Kasparov and Fischer. The point of the knight off is to stop white using the b5 square, and to play very aggressively on the queen's side like Finketo and the bishop and try and hit the centre and basically try and hack white up. Of course there are several moves, there is stuff like Bishkivai and then um, pawn up with f4 and when the black will play at queen b6 or something and we get the poison pawn which is a favourite of Bobby Fischer and I think he never lost of it until Spassky beat him in the 1972 World Championship. Um, there is the Amsterdam attack with f4 it means to try and get f5 and e5 in and all that stuff there is this interesting sideline which has a very nasty trap for if black plays it's b5 then we've got e5 winning material there's also um, the g3 line which Brandon covers in the video there is h3 which Mike Adams plays a lot to try and play g4 in one move there is the English attack, which Nigel Sharp plays, with Bishy e3, Queen d2, Castle's queen side, f3, g4, h4, etc. And there is a nice card with Bishy b2, which prepares to castle short and play f4 with attacking chances. But black is not without counterplay, e5 is played. This is There's two ways to play the knight off, there's this and there's also the shaven in chance position with e6, which is also very tough and complex. e5 is more risky because Although black is take, taking more control of the centre, this weakens the d5 square badly and also the d6 pawn becomes backward and on open file. Half open file, either, either. And black has to be careful in some lines that basically if white can swap off all the minor pieces except one knight and black's dark squad bishop, black is practically positionally a bust because white just sticks a knight on d5 and strangles you and your bishop's completely blocked in. So that's what you have to be careful of. Knight back to b3, bishop e6, castles, bishop e7, now king h1 to get the king out of any um, annoying checks in the diagonal, castles, now f4. And now this is the first interesting point, and I think drip dot made the correct move in this position to take it, because I think if he doesn't take it, white plays f5 with tempo, and then after save, each player continues with knight to c6. I think you just got f5 with 10 board after bishop d7, you got to fight g4. 
and White can actually get a very dangerous attack really quickly with G5 and G6, maybe it's a pawn sack and just bring all the pieces around. So he probably has to play something like H6 and then H4, it can be quite dangerous this. I mean I don't think it's actually that strong in this position, because if he's like knight H7 but in a lot of lines you have to be careful of F5 and then G4 if you're against a Sicilian. So he took. So although it opens the F file for White's book, it also gives him a potential useful square on E5 and isolates White's E pawn. So making end games go for black. Although he has to watch out for the pressure on D6. And now D5 was played, which I do not like at all. I think it's a bit premature because White's you think White's pieces are all developed and Black's aren't. He's got still got a knight sitting in the box. So before taking action, you should always develop your pieces. So knight c6 would have been the preferred choice. And I think this is fine for black. I don't think white's really got anything. Maybe try queen e1 to swing the queen into the attack. And then just, just something like b5. Getting space on the um, queen side and threatening stuff like b4. Moving the defense of the um, pawn on e4. So d5 was played. And now e5 which is logical. But I don't, think, I don't like that move either. I think taking this either took it me. Because it gets rid of white's weakness as well. And say so after the knight takes, maybe take this, queen takes, I've had a bishop takes. So queen takes, and then knight d4. I think white's got, black's, got to, black's got to be careful now. Now he needs to get his knight into the game, and then white can nab the two bishops. And white's two bishops in a, a very open position it should give him a small advantage at least. But e5 was played. Now the knight comes into a very good square. Just takes, takes. This e pawn is actually very annoying. It's quite hard to attack and it's cramping white's position. And the queen swap were not very good for white at all. I mean, black's will comes in with tempo on that. So I think this is just quite good for black, this position, with a d file. And to pause then. So I'm not sure what I said before that if it sounds funny, but here we go. Queen E1 was played, which is a good move, avoiding the queen swap and preparing to hack strip drop up on the king's side. Queen comes to C7, which is a typical square in the Najdorf, um, putting pressure on the C pawn. And now the C pawn is actually sacked with Queen G3, because I don't think it can be taken because of Bishop H6, forcing G6. And now we can actually grab the rook because we can't grab the bishop on e2 because our bishop's hanging, so we have to take it back. And then putting the knight into d4 and black is losing. So rook d8 was played. And now bishop h6 is harmless because you can just play g6, although it might actually be a good move anyway because it does um, probe some weaknesses around the um, king queen side, unless, or in fact, you can play bishop f8. Yeah, so the idea behind rook d8 is to play bishop f8. And then bishop a6 has been rendered rather pointless. But maybe this isn't good now because of bishop g4. In fact, actually, I think you can ignore it and play knight c6. Because bishop h6 can actually be answered now by queen takes e5. Yeah, so knight c6 stops it because of the pressure on e5, and it's actually hard to defend e5 again. And say so if white tries bringing these knight round, we can actually play knight d4 hitting the bishop. So now bishop a6, we can actually just play g6 anyway because there's no time to take the rook. Which is not good. Rook came to d8. And now I think bishop g4 is a good move. Swapping off this defensive bishop. And again, straight drops has got the problem that he's not developing his done. It won't develop his knight. It seems to be a to develop his knight. Which is not good. But c3 was played by a timid move and now finally the knight comes into the game. At move 16. Knight d4. And now knight c5. Which is potentially a bit risky because the knight can easily be kicked away with b4 and then the, once the bishop's taken then there is a problem with the um King's side becoming weak with the f pawn being removed from defence and then the f file being open for white's rook. So I would have preferred instead to actually put the knight in a more defensive role on f8, just guarding h7 against any stuff. 
But white does seem a bit better after bis g4. But nice c5. Bis g4. Good move. Um, aiming to get with these bishops. So if bishop takes g4. Now if the queen takes g4, so queen d7. Um, which, why should not take the queens? Obviously, he's the one attacking. Because when you're attacking, keep the queens on. So knight f5 makes sense. And in fact, now black's in trouble. So if knight e6, we've got knight takes 6 check, king f8. And now just bishop e3. Because if g takes h6, we have takes f7 check. And if he takes, then we get mated by rook f1. And the only move is to throw pieces in the way and get mated anyway, because king e8, we've got queen h5 is mate. Very long lines, these. So he did right to protect his bishop with queen b6. But then again, this bishop takes e6 does still seem quite good for black, white. Because if f takes e6, we've got bishop h6. Forcing g6. And now, whoops, my slipped again. Queen f2 takes advantage of the new open f file. And in fact, rook f8 is more or less forced, which drops an exchange. So he has to take with the knight. And now he's knight into f5, avoiding the swap of knights. And again, he has the same problems of. It's like knight takes 6 is coming, this is not nice. This knight is a monster. But b4 was played, kicking the knight away. Knight comes into d3, which is a good square, because as that famous Kasparov game, where the knight in d3 was known as the octopus knight. And now he took the knight, but he should have took the bishop. Because this knight is actually potentially a lot stronger. I mean, okay, it's kept out of f5 in this position, but we've got now we've got bishop e3 for any all sorts of nasty discoveries. And in fact, there's no move that keeps the queen on the defence of the e6 pawn and avoids the discovery. And the discoveries are pretty nasty with knight f5 being threatened, which would win. So I was actually more or less forced to give the exchange up if it takes d4, which is obviously not good. But he played knight takes e6. F takes e6, now bishop e3, queen c6 on the move, and now queen h3, which gives up the c3 point, but it does get e6 in return, and the e6 point practically can't be defended. In fact, it can't, so yeah, you might as well grab on c3, but this is a blunder. But even though it's looking pretty bad, bishop takes e6, check, king h8, now bishop f5, a good move for any mating one. And the only move, as bad as it is, is to play. Well, there's h6 or g6. He played h6. If g6, then. If bishop takes g6, then actually there's this nice tactic. Knight f2. Forcing bishop takes. Then we take the queen. And white is only pawn up with bad fractured pawns right around the king side, so it's probably. Not far for quality. So after g6, white actually should take this pawn instead. And okay, black can take this pawn. Again, stupid mouse sleeping all the time. Take this pawn, not that one, this one. And our bishop takes g6 is playable. And queen g7 is the only move to avoid an immediate catas catastrophe. But bishop e4 is played. And again, white is a pawn up with a really good position. So we played h6 instead, seeing probably seeing this stuff. And now he actually white actually played the best move. I mean I'd probably have played this me. Figured he just wins on the spots, but there's this move that just about saves black. Because of rook takes f2. And actually um grabbing this rook, amazingly enough, loses to this. Blocking it, the check with check, and that is mate. So knight f2, we can play both takes f2, but we do have now queen to h3, which gets rid of the pin and we'll win this bishop back. But after bishop takes e4, white is two pawns up, and that is not anywhere near enough compensation. So if bishop takes b4, we can play actually rook f7, that's pretty crushing. But queen h5 was played. The plan is to just crudely mate him with queen g6 to h7. 
the best defence was Queen C6 to stop that, although it's still pretty bleak after the move E6. And after the only move is, is the only move, the only real move to stop mate is to sacrifice the exchange, which is obviously not good. But Rook F8 was played. And now uh, there is a nice uh, win for white in this position. Um, if you want to try and spot it, please stop the video now. If you'll test for the video. Now we resume. The move was bishop takes h6. Because now the knight f2 check completely fails. Because there is still, uh, after rook takes f2, the f file has been blocked. And there is still um, queen takes a1, bishop c1 mating. So that doesn't work. And the only move is to give the exchange up. Now something similar does happen in the game. But there is a difference. After rook takes f5. Again the only move is to play g6. And of course now queen takes g6 would be a blunder. Because it allows queen takes a1. Because there is no discovery check anymore. So in fact white's only move to actually not lose. But win is to play bishop d2 check. Queen's got to be taken, and then take the queen. Why is it exchange up and the pawn? I should win this pretty easily. The problem is with the game continuation after queen g6 takes, takes, um, drip drop wins this pawn as well. So drip drops only the exchange down for a pawn. So there's plenty of chances to save the game. Now the queen's come off. And the drip drop has survived the worst. Rook f4 is played, which other wins this pawn, drops this one as well. Knight back to c6, rook b1, a5 only move. Wonder if a3 is playable in this position, but I don't think it's actually that, it's that good. So after rook takes b7, just drop the bishop back to cover the threats and drip drop can then go see the run his pawn down. It's actually quite dangerous. So h3, give the king some luft in some lines. Walk d8. Try and get some activity down the d-file. A3 was played this turn, but again, that's like, like I said, it's not a very good move actually. Because now drip drops getting a lot of activity. And that rookie one pinning the bishop rather annoyingly. Although in this position, this is quite a strong move to check. Except king a7, rook e6. And in fact, if something like knight b4 is played, then you've got this move. Which wins the. Well, this is a beautiful move, this actually, because after rook takes c6, we've got rook takes g7, we're gaining the rook. Say so king moves, and then rook takes c6. And now white is just the exchange up, and you might, there is still a few technical difficulties, because we have to win the a pawn first, which shouldn't be too difficult, because it's fixed, it'll be fixed on a dark square if we, if we do that, and then win with these two pawns at king's side. So it'll be quite a long job, but it'll be lost in the long run. Especially at this torturous time control. King g3 was played, which looks natural. But bishop d6 check. Um, he, all he had to do was play king f2, and he's almost winning. Because it, in fact, this is actually practical winning this because it attacks the rook, and then attack the rook again. It moves back, and then to like rook d. That's what am I doing? Picks up the wrong rook. Rook d7, this is just very good for white. But you play king f3 to the rather shock and horror. Because amazingly enough, after knight e5 check, it's actually now going to either. I think it's actually going to be a perpetual check draw. Nothing white can do to avoid it. And so, um, drip drops, windows a draw. He hung in there after some. After being hacked in the middle game, he managed to hang in there and managed to actually find a nice draw. And it's pretty good to say he's outraged by nearly 500 points. He was very happy with this, and rightly so. Although, of course, he will have to play better in the uh, next few rounds or we will, uh, to avoid getting hacked. But, yeah, um, good result for him. And I'll be back shortly after tea with more of Drip Drops games. But for now, please leave any comments or thoughts. Thanks very much.